Good morning. Again, I'm Michelle Corson. I'm the Public Relations Officer with Kern County Public Health. We uh, have a lot of concern, obviously, about the novel coronavirus, which we're calling COVID-19. Over the weekend, there were lots of developments, so understandably, our community has a lot of questions. So I just wanted to kind of come together today and let you know where we stand right now in Kern County, um, and some of the actions that we have taken. So let me just start by saying that we continue to monitor uh, this very fast evolving situation. Our department is in regular and ongoing daily communications with the Centers for Disease Control and the California Department of Public Health, uh, receiving guidance and updates which frankly are, are rapidly coming and ever changing. Currently, there are no confirmed cases of the novel coronavirus in Kern County, and the immediate health risk remains low for the general public. There have been 43 cases of COVID-19 confirmed in the United States, and an additional 47 have been identified in persons that have returned um, um, and were through the Wuhan China and the Diamond Princess cruise ship. So kind of two different um, types of cases that we've been dealing with. What is new and what changed over the weekend is that the first case of COVID-19 in a healthcare worker occurred in Washington and the first possible outbreak in a long-term care facility were reported in Washington. And additionally, there has been confirmed two deaths in Washington, which is the first two deaths in the United States from COVID-19. Again, all of this has occurred in Washington. Uh, the CDC has come out and they are stating that we are likely to see more cases and in the coming days and that person-to-person -person spread will continue to occur globally. Another thing we really want to remind our community about, the travel advisories and restrictions completely continue to change. I think they're going to be even announcing some new things today. So we're really advising residents to watch where these restrictions are going. The Centers for Disease Control has a fantastic website and we really want our community to stay up to date by visiting that website and more importantly visiting our website. So let me get into a few things quickly um, that we have done here at Public Health and then I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, the actions that we have taken uh, and this has been happening over the last several weeks here in Kern County we have implemented the emergency medical service ditch, dispatch protocols to assess 911 calls for potential symptoms of COVID-19 and exposure history. This provides notification of a potential case so that first responders are aware before that initial face-to-face -face contact with the uh, patient. We have launched an internal public health task force. Uh, and so it is something that we are fully prepared. Um, we wanna be able to provide guidance to first responders and the community as this evolves. Really importantly, we have developed a local website and we've just updated it today. So visit kernpublichealth.com and this is where we're gonna to continue to provide ongoing up-to-date information for the community. Um, and it also provides really fantastic links to the CDC and the Centers for Disease Control. We are issuing routine detailed recommendations to our local health care providers. We have implemented the CDC monitoring program for returning international travelers. As of today, we have received 13 names of international travelers that we are assessing on whether or not they fit the criteria for being monitored. And if they fit the criteria, that is something that our staff is working on. We have implemented ongoing collaboration, obviously, with our local media partners. Um, and we want to continue to hold now weekly updates so that we can get the message out in a timely fashion. Um, 
we finally are working with hospitals, healthcare providers, schools, college campuses, local businesses, county departments, law enforcement, and corrections. These meetings are happening. They're happening all week. The communications have been ongoing um, as our community really kind of brings the preparations that we've all been making over the course of the last several weeks. Um, we're just continuing to get ready for the potential spread of a respiratory uh, illness such as COVID-19. And the final thing that I would like to say is there's, there's lots of calls and rumors that there are cases in local hospitals. That is not the case. There are no confirmed cases. But what I will say is we have begun testing. Testing kits have become available. This is a way to quickly identify uh, any potential cases. So we are currently testing two residents for coronavirus. They are considered low risk. The criteria was just expanded for individuals that we could test since Friday, actually. So these are individuals that, again, are very low risk and out of an abundance of caution with the new criteria, we are now testing two individuals. Uh, I won't say where these individuals are, but they are in isolation and the proper protocols that the CDC has put forth um, are obviously being implemented. So I think that we can expect more testing to happen over the next days and weeks uh, as this is just one of those things if we can identify the cases, we can quickly isolate and take the proper precautions.